Hey guys, Brandonia Productions here, and let me tell you, it is windy out there today. But weather aside, let's go ahead and get started with today's tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be talking about slicing. So slicing is kind of a sequence notation in Python. If you have a sequence of something, you can use slicing to access certain subsets of it. So the easiest way to demonstrate slicing is with a list. So let's go ahead and start with a simple list. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> now, in this list, I want the middle three elements. In some languages, there's kind of like a sublist function that you can call. In Java, for instance, there's substring. Uh, however, in Python, we can use the native list notation with a colon in the middle. So slicing works like this. You have a list, and then you say where you want to start your slice, which index you want to start. So we want to grab the two as our first element in the slice. So we want to start at element one. And then we spe whoa. Sorry, I don't know what just happened. <laughs> and then we specify the ending element plus one. So if we actually want the last element of our slice to be this four, then we want index zero, one, two, three, four. This is so as the second element of the slice, you can use the length of the list and it will actually grab the last element. So if we use this syntax, we'll actually get the middle three elements as a new list. Pretty interesting. So, of course, with everything in Python, this syntax also works for other sequences. So, say we have a string, hello, and then we do s14, we get l. Right, very similar syntax. So, this is the basics of slicing, and it's a great way to operate on certain portions of a list. Uh, as one example, uh, a lot of times you might need to take a list and remove the first element, right? So you can do something like L equals, and then you want L to be a path of names or something, right? Brandon, George, Judy. And then you would get the first element, and then you want to get all of the elements except for the first element. So in order to do that, you specify the element we want to start at. So I want to start at the next element. So the second element, index zero. And then I want to say to the end of the list, right? So my goal here is to eliminate the first element. I want to eliminate my name from the list and then keep the rest of the list the same. So we can do this by saying L equals, we're going to reassign the list, equals L starting at the second element, colon, and then if you leave the part after the colon blank, you actually get until the end. So L is now just these elements. Similarly, if we were to take L, let's, let's, let's make L what it was previously, and we want to eliminate the last element, we could do the same thing, but in reverse. We don't specify a starting index, just a colon and then a ending index. So in this case, zero, one, two. Now remember it is the ending index plus one here. So we have essentially eliminated the last element. So that's great. So those are your syntaxes for cutting things off the head of a sequence and cutting things off the tail of a sequence. Now, if we actually take a list, let's use the same list again, and we use negative integers, like negative one as an index, we'll get the last element, negative two, the second to last, negative three, well, that actually happens to be the same as the first. So this can also be used in our previous example, L equals L. So we want to, our previous example was to cut only the tail element, so we want to start at the beginning and we want to eliminate the last one. So this syntax is a little bit confusing, but uh, keep in mind that the last, the second element is the index plus one. 
So by saying that the last element is, well, the last element, we are trimming off the element because of this plus one nonsense. So now if we take a look at what L is, we have essentially eliminated the last element. This is list slicing. There's also a third parameter. Let's call each number in between the colons a parameter. So there's a third parameter you can specify here. Uh, and this is actually the step parameter. So we're going to go ahead and add two new names, uh, Pablo and Steve. So L is now an L, a list of five elements. Now, if we actually specify L starting at the beginning, ending at the end, and stepping over every other element, what do we get? So this syntax is definitely a little, a little confusing, but if we actually look and relate to our previous list comprehension, or sorry, list slicing examples, you'll begin to understand. So remember, if we leave the element before the first colon blank, that means start at the beginning. If we leave the number after the first colon blank, it means start at the end, or stop at the end. And then we can specify another colon and indicate our step. So this means after each element, how many elements over should we now move? So we take Brandon, and then we have two steps. So we go one, two, Judy, one, two, Steve. Now by default, if you leave this blank, or don't include it, it's a step of one. We can also specify a step of three, right? And we say, Brandon, one, two, three. So that's pretty interesting. Now what happens if you actually specify a negative step? Ah, so if you specify a negative step, it starts from the end. Steve, one, two, three, George. So that just goes to show you that if you specify a negative one step, we actually reverse the list. So for all of those, uh, I know reversing a list is actually a very popular interview question for jobs. So if you use Python on your interview, it's a one liner. One other thing that this list comprehension is useful is actually copying a list. So lists in Python are passed by reference, right? So if we create a new list, L equals one, two, three, we create a new function called alter that takes a list and we set L one equal to five. If we call alter on L, the second element of L is five. Sometimes this isn't what you want, right? You want to take a list from the user and we want to play with it, but we don't want to actually edit the list that the user gave us. So in order to do this, we have to copy the list. Now there are two ways to do this in Python. Way number one is to use the copy module from the Python standard library, or you can use list slicing. So we can now say L copy equals L, and we want to start at the beginning and at the end and keep the same ordering. Now, if we L copy one equal five, You can see that if we call all, well, so what's L look like right now? L, we should now make L back to what it was previously, one, two, three. So now if we call alter on L, you can see that it returns the new list, one, five, three. However, our value of L remains unchanged because the function actually copied L. So those are the basics of list slicing in Python. Common uses are to extract a sub list from the list. Uh, you can also trim the head of the list, trim the tail of the list, reverse the list, or make a copy of the list. Now, one final note before closing, I just wanted to say that, uh, two final notes actually. Final note number one, if we have L, if we just specify L like this, 
to make a copy, it's essentially the same as calling L zero colon length of L. So that makes it a little more clear of why it creates a copy because these are the default values. Yeah. Okay, so with that being said, you can probably see these slice variables don't actually have to be static numbers, right? They can be dynamic uh, variables. So we can actually say def alter, right? Or remove from head, we'll say. It'll take a list and then the number of elements to remove from the head. And it will return a new list with that many elements removed. So then all we have to do is return L, right? And so num is the number of elements we want to remove from the head. So if num is one, we basically want to return a copy of the list starting at the second element. So now we've created a function that uses a dynamic runtime variable in list slicing. And indeed, if we call remove from head on one, two, three, four, five, and we want to remove two elements from the head, you can see that it is indeed does that. So it's a very compact syntax for removing things from lists or altering lists. So thanks for watching this tutorial on slicing. Remember that you can use slicing with any sequence. You can use it with tuples, uh, strings, lists, etc. And do remember that it's extremely useful when it comes to job interview questions. Thanks for watching this tutorial, and I hope you enjoy your Monday. Have a good day. Bye-bye now.